So let's review the process of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis refers to the production of blood cells, both red blood cells and white blood cells. Now where does this occur? It occurs in the bone marrow. Uh, we're going to focus primarily on the production of leukocytes. Those are white blood cells. Um, so all the immune cells that we're going to talk about right now they can be classified as leukocytes, white blood cells. Uh, so the production of all blood cells, both red and white blood cells, begins in the bone marrow, specifically the red bone marrow. And in uh, bone marrow, you find these stem cells, uh, sometimes referred to as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. So these cells are self-renewing. Uh, when they undergo mitosis, they'll produce more of themselves, and some of the daughter cells will turn into or differentiate into different cell types, depending on what the body needs. And we'll talk about some cytokines that can trigger the production of certain uh, leukocytes. Uh, we'll talk about that in the future. So in your bone marrow, you've got these pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. They have the ability to turn into many different types of cells, hence the term pluripotent very potent. And when these cells divide, they produce daughter cells, and some of these daughter cells will eventually turn into things like lymphocytes. So when we talk about a lymphoid progenitor cell, that cell has the ability to divide and differentiate into three different types of lymphocytes. Uh, B cells, T cells, and NK cells. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about and cover B cells in Unit 2, uh, and B cells produce antibodies that will be used to uh, combat an infection. T cells we'll talk about extensively in Unit 3. Those lymphocytes uh, will either kill virally infected cells or produce cytokines to help the immune response. Or lymphocytes um, can be NK cells, which can also recognize uh, abnormal cells in the body. So these are the three types of lymphocytes that we typically discuss uh, in the immune system. Um, the myeloid uh, lineage uh, consists of a number of different immune cells or leukocytes. Um, the ones I've circled here are granulocytes, so the neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, and mast cell, they're all granulocytes. These are immune cells that when they recognize a pathogen, they will um, fuse the pathogen with these granules that are present in their cytoplasm. These granules are filled with toxins, um, and when uh, pathogens are exposed to these toxins, the pathogens die. So these are all granulocytes, and as we talk about these cells in more detail in the future, we'll learn about where do these cells reside, where do they um, recognize pathogens, how do they recognize pathogens, and how do they exert their effector function. But this is just a general review of immune cells in Chapter 1. Uh, monocytes are leukocytes, but they're not terminally differentiated. They're not um, attacking and recognizing pathogens typically. What monocytes do is they are present in the bloodstream, and when they enter tissues, they're going to differentiate into either dendritic cells or macrophages. So we talk about monocytes being a leukocyte, but it's not typically one that's uh, attacking and defending. It's uh, traveling around the body and then turning into dendritic cells and macrophages, which can recognize and attack pathogens. So dendritic cells and macrophages are both phagocytes. They perform phagocytosis, where they can engulf a pathogen and um, destroy it. Neutrophils, along with being granulocytes, are also phagocytes. So these are the three main phagocytes we'll talk about, and we'll cover neutrophils and macrophages extensively in the first unit. Dendritic cells we'll talk more about when we talk about T cells in unit three. Um, we're not going to talk about the erythroid lineage because that produces uh, red blood cells, erythrocytes, and platelets. Uh, and they play little roles in the immune system, which we will talk about later. So these are the immune cells. They're briefly introduced in Chapter 1, and you, know, you can read about them. Uh, it's good to sort of get a review of what their function is, but we will go into much more greater detail in the future chapters. So when thinking about blood cells, and uh, immune cells in the body, um, you've got to think about where are they present during uh, the normal uh, non-infected 
organism. So you have immune cells in your body right now um, in certain locations if you don't have an infection. They travel around the body. Um, if there is an infection, sometimes immune cells move from one place to the other. So when you're thinking about immune cells, you have to think about where they're located before an infection and during an infection. So where can immune cells be located? Well, many of them are located in the bloodstream. Either that's where they patrol and defend, or they just use the bloodstream to travel to different parts of the body. So sometimes we're going to find immune cells inside tissues or organs. Um, there's a chart in your book that talks about the abundance of uh, white blood cells in the bloodstream. And again, you're going to have blood cells in the, uh, white blood cells in the bloodstream, but also have them in organs and tissues. So you've got to think about where they're located. Um, the third place we talk about immune cells uh, patrolling, attacking, defending, are in the lymphoid tissues. And that'll be at the next video to talk about the lymphoid tissues and the lymphatic system lymph nodes. So, um, when thinking about immune cells, just keep in mind they're going to be diff they're going to be located in different parts of the body. Let's talk about neutrophils, for example. So before an infection in a healthy person, they are primarily found in the bloodstream, and you can see there's a high percentage of them uh, in the bloodstream. But upon infection, during inflammation, for example, immune cells leave the blood and enter an infected tissue site. So neutrophils are moving from the blood into infected tissues. Monocytes. You find them in the bloodstream, but when monocytes enter organs and tissues, they will turn into dendritic cells and macrophages. So monocytes are just traveling in the bloodstream to enter organs and tissues to get access to them. Lymphocytes, B cells, T cells, and K cells, they're going to travel using the bloodstream, but then they're going to enter lymphoid tissues. They are in fact lymphocytes and that's where they um, patrol and try to recognize pathogens. And if they don't find them, they might go back into the bloodstream and go back and forth between blood and lymphoid tissue. Again, we're going to go extensively into each of these when we cover them, uh, each cell specifically. Uh, eosinophils and basophils, a very low percentage of them in the bloodstream in terms of, in terms of the percentage of leukocytes, but that's because you find them primarily in organs and tissues. Mast cells aren't even on this list because mast cells are found exclusively inside organs and tissues. So as we get to cover each of the immune cells specifically, we'll talk about where they're present normally, how they recognize a pathogen, how they attack a pathogen, and if they travel from one part of the body to the other. But these are the three main um, locations of immune cells, either the bloodstream or inside organs and tissues or in the lymphatic tissues. Um, the way to recall uh, the abundance of immune cells in the bloodstream is using the um, pneumatic, uh, um, pneumonic, sorry, a term, uh, never let monkeys eat bananas. So in a normal person's blood work, for example, you'd find uh, neutrophils being the most abundant, lymphocytes being the second most abundant, monocytes, the third most abundant, and then eosinophils and basophils. And as a clinician, if you do some blood work on a patient and you notice, wow, their leukocyte, their, their lymphocyte levels are uh, very high, that might denote, for example, a viral infection. If you uh, recognize that their eosinophil levels are abnormally high, that might uh, um, signify another type of immune system disorder. So, um, this is a basic introduction of immune cells and their function. You can look in the book and it will go into a little more detail in Chapter 1 on each of their functions, but like I said, throughout the course, we'll go into great detail into all of them.